Our reading for this evening is taken from Luke chapter 22, beginning in verse 7. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. Where do you want us to prepare for it? they asked. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is the guest room where I might eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks, and said, Take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. But the hand of him who is going to betray me is with mine on the table. The Son of Man will go as it has been decreed, but woe to that man who betrays him. They began to question among themselves which of them it might be who would do this. This Passover meal is such an important part of Jewish tradition, and since we know what comes after this in the story, I think that we might just be skipping over some of the most important parts of this. This Passover meal was not just an occasion to gather and to eat and to, to do certain ritual things. It has a strong connection to story. And so there are steps in this which are followed every single time the Passover is observed. And one of the very first steps is washing hands. And as we all know right now, Washing hands is pretty important. So, you wash hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Now, there's nothing scriptural that says they wash their hands for 20 seconds, but in this age of coronavirus, that's a good practice for us to observe as we remember this meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. After the hands had been washed, there would be multiple stages to this, with elements in the meal representing different parts of the story. Everything from eating bitter herbs to lettuce, that would be dipped in salt water that would remind them of tears of suffering. They had unleavened bread that would have pointed back to the bread that the Israelites took with them out of Egypt when they had to leave in such a hurry. There's a, a hard boiled or charred egg that's a part of it. There's the cup all of these things would have been observed so that they could retell the story of how God delivered his people through the Exodus. Now, there would have been an assumption that people gathered for a Passover meal probably already knew the story. And so they don't just simply go back to the book of Exodus and just retell it because, well, we know that story. So instead, much like a sermon, as they gathered to remember the story and as they ate the different parts of the meal which pointed them back to the story, they would remember God's providence in very personal ways. They would retell of God's faithfulness. And there's a saying that goes, when a story is told well, the event happens again. 
meaning that as they retold this Exodus event, it was like God was delivering these people. It was like they were experiencing that level of providence and that level of protection, that amount of love and grace. And so they gather and they retell this story as they recline around the table. And then Jesus does something else. Jesus takes the bread and he says, this is my body. And whenever you eat this, I want you to remember me. He takes the cup and he gives thanks. And he says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins of many. Drink of it, all of you. And then Jesus says, there is somebody here at the table with me about to betray me. And that's a hard turn. To go from remembering God's providence and grace, God's love and presence, to someone here has evil in their heart. Someone here is about to do wrong. In the different gospel accounts of this Last Supper, uh, some emphasize Judas and what was about to take place, and some emphasize Peter and his denial that was about to take place. Either way, there was a shakeup that happened. In the midst of this remembrance of God's love and providence was an acknowledgement of what was about to take place, the brokenness that was in the midst of those closest to Jesus, and there's something in us that I think can resonate with that. We need to retell the story of God's love and grace. We need to be reconnected to the truth that God is always with us, that God never leaves us, and that God is capable of amazing things. Our God is a deliverer. We also need to own our own brokenness. We need to be willing to come face to face with our own sin, with our own shortcomings, with our own need for a Messiah. We do this as an act of preparation for celebrating Easter, but on this Maundy Thursday, we pause, we reflect, we remember the love of God, we remember the stories of how God has delivered his people in the past, and we look to our own deliverance. Not because we've gotten everything right, but because we know who God is and we call upon God as our deliverer. As the people were gathered around the table, Jesus took the bread and broke it and said, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup, and after he had given thanks, Jesus said, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for the forgiveness of sins of many. Drink of it, all of you. I invite you all to observe this time of communion to take bread in your home, to take cup, to take whatever supplies you have. For as the disciples were gathered around this table at the end of this meal, we still gather around tables as well. But we take this moment and set it aside, make it holy unto God. We give our focus to the Lord. We take the bread, we take the cup, we remember what Jesus has done for us, his body broken. We remember Jesus' blood poured out. And we remember that God has held nothing back so that you and I may know that we are beloved. 
so that we may be restored. So the brokenness that lies behind us does not have to define what is ahead of us. As we celebrate this Maundy Thursday, as we prepare ourselves to remember the crucifixion, death, and burial of Christ, and as we get ready to celebrate resurrection and new life, may each of us remember God's love, confess our own brokenness, and look toward the cross. Amen.